And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to my universe mode. I am Derek D. Ginger King, and here we go. We got Big Show under the payroll of Mr. McMahon, yet he also wants a shot at that WWE Championship. He is taking on old school Undertaker, obviously not the same Undertaker we saw from earlier tonight. Just want to keep that in mind. Now, Big Show at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. It was unclear in the beginning of the match whose loyalties he was siding with his own to be the champion or with Mr. McMahon and um, you know maybe during that match he was working for himself but it certainly seemed to me that he was working with Mr. McMahon uh, he weakened John Cena in the Elimination Chamber match uh, giving Mr. McMahon the win and last week on Monday Night Raw he defeated John Cena after Mr. McMahon helped Big Show win so, conspiracy? I don't know. Maybe Big Show wants a place in the corporation. Maybe he doesn't, but I don't know. It's just, I'm, I'm seeing, like, behind-the-counter money being traded here. All right, here we go. We're going to have Big Show versus Old School Undertaker. Since we already have an Undertaker in the mix for a storyline leading into WrestleMania, let's have Big Show win this match here. This and Mr. this is on a quick match difficulty. I was hoping something would happen, actually, but nothing did. That's interesting. Maybe something will happen after this. Who knows? Um, so we're going to take out this Old School Undertaker. First of all, I'm, I'm not really impressed with Old School Undertaker. I like New School Undertaker. Oh, shit. What? What is going on here? Mr. McMahon is coming out. And Mr. What? McMahon, a low blow to the me. big show. And the referee threatening to disqualify this match and end it. One, two, and big show kicks out. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Big show has been betrayed. I don't think that there was any money under the table. This puts to rest any of the conspiracy theories. It seems that Big Show was working for himself, and it just happened to be against John Cena. But maybe he, maybe Mr. McMahon has made a mistake here. Um, I, I am, I'm a true believer of you should always have your enemies in chaos. And if we think that Big Show and Mr. McMahon are in cahoots, we're gonna attack Big Show. Not Mr. McMahon, but now that we know that Big Show is not in cahoots with Mr. McMahon, if I'm John Cena, I'm going after Mr. McMahon, and I'm asking Big Show to help me because Big Show just got betrayed. This is insane. I love this Mr. McMahon storyline. He is your WWE champion, um, and it's, it's still undecided as to what the match will be at WrestleMania. We do know that JBL has that... That number one contendership sh spot for the WWE uh, Championship. So, um, is it going to be an Armageddon Hell in the Cell, though? Who knows, you know? So maybe Big Show can get in on it. Or maybe he could at least get some redemption on, uh, on Mr. McMahon here. Big Show going for the choke slam on The Undertaker. Mr. McMahon low-blowing The Undertaker, I don't think did a whole lot of damage except to make him angry. One, two, three, the choke slam works. Undertaker falls to the big show. Mr. McMahon has angered a bear here tonight. That is not good, as JBL said quite many, many times. Did you see right there? The pin failed. It went one, two, no. And Mr. McMahon ran like a scalded dog. The choke slammed old school Undertaker, putting him down. We can't have two Undertakers in the same lineup. We did that last month with The Rock, and it wasn't very great. So, there we go. We got The Big Show still reigning supreme, and he wants a shot at the WWE Championship. So does John Cena. Maybe a number one contenders match at WrestleMania. Who knows? Who knows? But here we go. Last week, obviously, Jack Swagger wanted to choose his opportunity, his his spot to be number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship, and he got jacked. Jack got jacked. That was the title of the video by Gangrel, who rose from the depths of dead deadness, which makes sense, I guess, because he's a vampire. But he rose from the depths of the dead rankings, where all the created people are because they never can go up anywhere and uh look at that 
Here he is in the main event of Monday Night Raw, going up against the Intercontinental Champion, Triple H. So, this is interesting as long as it's not repetitive. Um, I don't mind, but I hope it's not repetitive. Um, while this match is going on, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some stuff that happened on Raw. I'm going to talk about my, maybe some stuff from Oregon, um, which is where I went on my vacation. Um, you know, maybe I'll talk about anything under the sun to distract me from this match. So, enjoy. Here we go, Gangrel. Look at this, Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger getting his revenge. Oh, this might be a short episode. Triple H, the Intercontinental Champion, really tasting the rewards here of having two challengers who hate each other more than they hate him. Look at this, Triple H. He's ready to finish this match already, and it hasn't even started. Gangrel, like rising from the dead of the rankings, has risen, risen I should say, risen from the uh, attack from Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger not appreciative from being stolen his uh, Intercontinental Championship match opportunity. Oh man, here we go. Is it going to happen already? Is it going to happen already? Oh, I don't think it will. I don't think uh, Gangrel's hurt enough. Triple H going for the pedigree. Is this going to be enough? One. Two, no, not going to be enough. Okay, um, so let's see. We talked about Daniel Bryan, and that was in the first week of, of Raw. Let's talk about the second week. I was for sure that Bray Wyatt would debut, and he didn't, so I didn't miss it. Yet, um, he didn't debut, so it's kind of like a bittersweet thing there. Um, let's see the stuff with Mark Henry and John Cena. Great. Um, I haven't seen all of the episode of number two, but the thing they're doing with Punk, very, very good. The promo package on last week's Monday Night Raw, the the, the most pre this the previous one, um, obviously, uh, not uh, whenever this comes out. Hopefully Sunday night, maybe Monday morning, Monday night. Uh, obviously not tonight or tomorrow night's Raw, but uh, last week's. Um, the promo they had with CM Punk and Paul Heyman was great. Like it was it was really good. I I really really did enjoy it. it you can tell like. They're really good friends. When they bring up stuff that really happened, it, it's almost always good, especially if it's something new. It's something fresh. And and what happened? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, if you don't know the term, what marking out means, it's basically you're a mark. You're marking out. It's when you go crazy. Logic leaves your head, and you start um, you start freaking out. Like, oh my god, yes, yes. Oh, 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 yes. Like it's it's almost the equivalent of of um I don't know, like a nerd getting a girlfriend. I don't know. That's that's what it is. It's like when you're marking out, when Triple H comes back and wants to face the Undertaker in Hell in a Cell, you're marking out because these two legends have never fought at WrestleMania and they're gonna fight her. I think they did, but whatever, we'll just kind of forget that. Um so, you know, that's what I mean. Like, marking out, that's what it is. And I marked out when the primetime players, who are guys that I like, are beating up CM Punk, who's a guy that I like, and then Curtis Axel's music hits, and he comes from the backstage, and he comes out and helps CM Punk. Now, I'm not a big fan of Curtis Axel yet, but seeing him come help out uh, CM Punk really helped his image in my book at least um and i and i like bad guys and i usually would like somebody like curtis axel but i don't really um not right now but when he was helping cm punk i was like yeah this kid's got it look at him go i i was actually i cared i cared that's basically what that means i cared that he was coming out and that he actually did help cm punk even though CM Punk didn't want the help. It's a, it's a very intricate storyline, as is the Daniel Bryan one that they're running now. Now he's all happy because he beat Randy Orton. Uh, it's, it's, all very, it's all very nice. It's all very... Uh, it's very good, WWE. Very well done. Uh, Sheamus versus Damian Sandow. I have yet to see a lot on that in the past two weeks. Obviously, I've watched the Hulu versions of Monday Night Raw, so I did not get to see that. The Dolph Ziggler... Del Rio heel turn, face turn, double turn, amazing, loved it, oh my god, um, AJ, you know, making fun of Caitlyn's weight, meh, 
it could be better if they were better actors. Um, AJ's fine, Caitlyn's kind of iffy, the rest of the divas being involved is annoying. I'm much more intrigued at what Stephanie McMahon is trying to do in the whole three-way GM while you have the GM supervisors trying to please all three of them. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued in what's going to be coming out of that. Uh, a three-way brand split? What's going on here? So, all sorts of things going on in wrestling right now that are good. Um, so, here we go. And look at this Triple H. Again, fooling me because I thought this was a magic moment. It is not. He is just posing. <laughs> Alright, let's preview next week's Monday Night Raw. Here we go. John Cena versus The Rock. Look at that. All right, here we go. Who's... Oh, well, we do need to follow the rules of my universe mode, and that is the main event. The winner moves, and the loser loses a spot, because I know Gangrel is below Triple H. So here we go. We have to edit this. Triple H99 overtakes Big Show. I don't know if I want to do that to... I, oh, but that's the rules. And I know he's all the way down here at, like, number 76. Well, is he 72? Look at this, Santino getting a bump from good old Gangrel. That's nice. <laughs> That's good. Alright, let's go ahead and skip forward. Triple H moved up, right? Yes, okay, good. Alright, here we go. Brie Bella will take on Kelly Kelly. Obviously, Kelly Kelly got beat this week by Karma. Let's see if Brie Bella has the same chance. Uh, Kane looking to out outlet some of his own frustration on a poor Santino Morella. Oh no, Kane versus Santino Morella next week. Sheamus will take on one half of the Nation of Domination. Very intriguing because they kind of had a thing last week. This, I'm very interested in the storyline. I'm very interested in this storyline. This one's meh, but it's Divas, so what did you expect? You know, good, great, great. Um, John Cena in a triple threat number one contenders match with The Big Show and Undertaker 97-98. Now, we obviously do not want Undertaker 97-98 to win, so John Cena or The Big Show, obviously. The money match is John Cena, but it's going to be JBL, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, weird. Um, but I am interested to see what goes on in that match. Again, another great storyline happening there. And then a triple threat main event match for you, Jack Swagger, Gangrel, and Triple H 99. Obviously, Triple H 99 should get the upper hand in that match because Jack Swagger and Gangrel cancel each other out. Triple H wins. That's that's kind of how that booking goes unless something changes it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Derek D. Ginger King. Wrestling is good. It is great. I'm happy that I caught up. I'm happy that I am here playing normal WWE 13 and not we WWE 13. Um, it is much, much improved. Um, so complainers about this game, pick up a Wii version and then complain, alright? So, I don't want to hear any more complaining about the gameplay of this game. It is good compared to what I have played. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I am Derek D. Ginger King. Look at this, Undertaker has turned his back on the WWE fans. Oh, man. What? So is Kane the good guy? I don't know. We'll have to find out next week. Thank you for watching. Derek D. Ginger King checking out.